In this video, we're going over the category Herbs That Stop Bleeding. If you're in Bensky, this is the first section of his chapter, Herbs That Regulate the Blood. We'll start by talking about what are the causes of bleeding in TCM, then we'll go over the individual herbs in this category, and finally, we'll just introduce a few formulas where these herbs pop up. If you want to follow along, there are slides and flashcards you can download. Links are below. And this video is brought to you by students like you. So to everyone who supports the YouTube channel and the website tcmstudy.net, thank you. If you're getting value out of these videos and would like to give something back, consider joining the Patreon, that's like a monthly pledge, or giving a one-time donation through Buy Me A Coffee. But let's go ahead and get into the herbs. So here we're talking about herbs that stop bleeding. So what kind of bleeding can these herbs treat? Well, these herbs can be used for what we call external bleeding or bleeding due to injury and trauma. This would be like, I fell and scraped my knee or somebody stabbed me. But more often we're using these herbs for internal bleeding or bleeding due to internal causes. This would be things like nosebleed, epistaxis, coughing up blood, hemoptysis, vomiting blood, hematemesis, blood in the urine, hematuria, or blood in the stool, hematochesia. This could also include various types of uterine bleeding like heavy menses or spotting between periods. In Chinese, you might see the term flooding and spotting, and that's referring to during the period, if the flow is very heavy, that would be the flooding, and then afterwards you still have some bleeding between periods, that would be the spotting. So that might be a term that you might see. This can also include bleeding during pregnancy. This would be a type of restless fetus syndrome, where our concern is that bleeding might be a sign of an impending miscarriage. So those are the types of bleeding that we're treating with these herbs. So what causes this internal bleeding? Well, in TCM, we have three main causes for bleeding. We can have bleeding due to heat in the blood, we can have bleeding due to blood stasis, or we can have bleeding due to deficiency. So when you talk about bleeding due to heat in the blood, remember heat causes things to speed up. So when heat gets into the blood, it can cause the blood to speed up so much that it begins to move recklessly or frenetically outside of the vessels. And when blood moves outside of the vessels, that's bleeding. Bleeding due to blood stasis might sound a little bit funny at first, but think about that if the blood is not flowing smoothly or if the blood is going along and it encounters an obstruction, the blood might go outside of the vessel in order to go around that obstruction. And when the blood goes outside of the vessel, that's bleeding. Or another way I think about this is think about if you had water moving through a pipe or through a high pressure hose. If that water is moving through and there's a kink in the hose or it encounters some blockage, the water might back up and start bursting out at the seams or bursting out of the hose. And that would be like what the blood is doing when there's blood stasis. And then we have bleeding due to deficiency. And we say deficiency, we specifically mean bleeding due to spleen deficiency. Remember the spleen has an action of controlling the blood or restraining the blood and holding it inside the vessels. So if the spleen is deficient, it fails in its function of containment and the blood leaks out. But here, when we say spleen deficiency, we're specifically referring to spleen yang deficiency, that there's not enough yang to activate this function. And so that's why this is also called bleeding due to deficiency coal. And I just like to emphasize this because when we get to our treatment strategies, we don't actually say tonify the spleen to stop bleeding or tonify spleen yang to stop bleeding. We say warm the interior or warm the channels to stop bleeding. So the emphasis is on the cold, but this is bleeding due to deficiency cold. So these are our main causes of bleeding. If we wanted to, we could actually break it down even further. When you say bleeding due to heat, that could be excess heat or deficiency heat. We could have cold that leads to blood stasis, which then leads to bleeding. But really, these are the three main ones. So when it comes to treating this bleeding, we actually have four treatment strategies. So we can clear heat and cool the blood to stop bleeding for bleeding due to heat. We can invigorate blood or transform blood stasis to stop bleeding for bleeding due to blood stasis. We can warm the interior or warm the channels for bleeding due to deficiency cold. Or for our fourth one, we can actually induce astringency 
to stop bleeding. So some of these herbs have an astringent nature that restrain or hold in leakage to stop bleeding. So for this last one, we would use uh, this treatment strategy for cases of injury and trauma where we wanted to induce astringency and hold the blood in. Or we could think of these as kind of like all-purpose blood stoppers that regardless of the cause, we can use these herbs that induce astringency. Or if it's not, if there's not really a clear cause, there's no one cause that stands out, then we could go to these herbs that induce astringency to stop bleeding. So th this is what these herbs are doing. This is how we're treating the bleeding. So when I get into the properties of these herbs, the taste, it's really going to depend on which strategy we're employing. If we're trying to invigorate the blood and transform stasis, those herbs are going to be acrid in flavor, since the acrid flavor moves and disperses. If we're trying to clear heat and cool the blood to stop bleeding, those herbs are going to be bitter in flavor. Since the bitter flavor clears heat, some of these herbs have an astringent property as well to stop the bleeding. The temperature is also going to vary because if we're trying to warm the interior, warm the channels, those herbs are going to be warm in temperature. If we're trying to clear heat and cool the blood, those herbs are going to be cold in temperature. If we're inducing astringency, those herbs might be neutral in temperature. So it really depends on what strategy we're making use of. But all of these herbs are going to enter the liver channel because the liver stores blood. Basically, anytime an herb has anything to do with the blood, we typically say it enters the liver channel. So the main actions are just gonna be the treatment strategies we talked about. The, these herbs are either going to invigorate blood to stop bleeding, clear heat and cool the blood to stop bleeding, induce astringency to stop bleeding, or warm the channels to stop bleeding. Cautions and contraindications we should pay attention to is the herbs that invigorate blood to stop bleeding, we usually use caution during pregnancy because again, if we're trying to invigorate the blood, we worry that we might create so much movement that we just move the baby right out of there. Uh, we could also say herbs that clear heat should not be used with cold patterns. Again, if we have cold, bitter herbs, don't use them for cold patterns or cases of deficiency. If the person has a heat pattern, don't give them warm herbs. Obvious stuff like that. And then for other things, these herbs are usually combined with other herbs that treat the root cause. So if we have bleeding due to blood stasis, we might combine it with herbs that invigorate blood. If we have bleeding due to cold, we might combine it with herbs that warm the interior. If we have bleeding due to heat, we might combine it with those herbs that clear heat. We remember we learned a very large category of herbs that clear heat. And one of those subcategories was herbs that cool the blood. So we might combine it with those herbs as well. And then we can say that many of these herbs can be used in their charred form to enhance their ability to stop bleeding. Remember at the very beginning we talked about powder or the methods of preparation, the various ways we can prepare herbs to uh, alter or enhance their function. Well, remember we said that charring an herb can enhance its ability to stop bleeding, so that's going to come up pretty often in this category. Actually, some of the, these herbs have multiple types of preparations depending on what we want to emphasize. If we want to emphasize the, their invigorating aspect, we might prepare them with vinegar or wine. If we want to emphasize their stop bleeding aspect, we might use them in their charred form to stop bleeding. So when we look at the list of herbs, this is a long category. If you're in Bensky, he just has one long list of herbs that stop bleeding, but other books will actually divide them up like this according to their treatment strategy, and that's how I like to do it. I think it makes things a little bit simpler and more digestible. We just have to keep in mind that some of these herbs do multiple things, so they might belong in multiple categories. So some herbs clear heat, to stop bleeding, but they also invigorate the blood. Or some herbs invigorate the blood, but they also have an action of inducing astringency. So that's something we have to keep in mind. These aren't like rigid lines. Some of, some of them do overlap, but I think this is a convenient way to organize these herbs. So our first one here is San Chi Noto Ginseng Radix. San Chi Noto Ginseng Radix. So San Chi invigorates blood to stop bleeding, or we could say transforms blood stasis to stop bleeding. So San Chi can be used for external bleeding, like injury and trauma, or can be used for internal bleeding for things like nosebleed, vomiting blood, blood in the urine, or blood in the stool. This could be bleeding due to blood stasis, or sometimes we say San Chi is just good because it stops bleeding without causing blood stasis. So this might be a concern that if we're trying to stop bleeding, that might inadvertently inhibit the normal movement of blood. So since Sanchi stops bleeding but also invigorates blood, we kind of avoid that. 
Besides that, we also say that San Qi invigorates blood to stop pain. And this makes sense because we said where there's stagnation, there's pain. Where there's pain, there's stagnation. So by removing the stagnation, we get rid of the pain. And this is especially useful for injury and trauma. So it's like if we put all these together, San Qi invigorates blood, it stops bleeding, and it stops pain. That means that San Qi is really good at treating injury and trauma. So it turns out that San Qi is so good at what it does is we can actually use it as a single herb. And the way we do that is we grind San Qi into a powder and then you swallow it with alcohol. So if you remember when we talked about Pao Zhu, the methods of preparation, one of the things we said is you can prepare herbs with alcohol to enhance that herb's ability to invigorate blood and stop pain. Well, here what we're doing, instead of preparing the San Qi with alcohol, we're just swallowing the herb with alcohol to get the same effect. And then, like we said before, a lot of these invigorating herbs, we say use caution during pregnancy, that we are creating movement and we don't want to create so much movement that it upsets the fetus. So with San Qi, we do have this special, special cooking instruction that says crush before decocting. I don't know if you've ever seen San Qi. I'm not sure that you could actually crush it like with a mortar and pestle. Sanji is like really hard. I think in order to crush it, you would actually need like an industrial grade grinder to break it up into smaller pieces. So even though we say crush before decocting, more likely what's gonna happen is you can just order San Qi already in its powdered form. And it's just easier to do that rather than trying to crush it. So San Qi, the name means three seven. There are several stories about how it possibly got this name, but I think the most common one is that that just refers to the pattern of the growth of the plant, that you get groups of three branches and each branch has three leaves on it. So that's San Qi. I remember this one invigorates blood, stops bleeding and stops pain, especially good for injury and trauma. Next is Pu Huang Tai Fai Pollen. Pu Huang Tai Fai Pollen. And this is Cattail Pollen. So kind of similar actions to San Qi. First we say that Pu Huang invigorates blood to stop bleeding. And so we can say that this is for external bleeding, like injury and trauma, or for internal bleeding, like uterine bleeding, vomiting blood, nosebleed, coughing up blood, blood in the urine, blood in the stool, or subcutaneous bleeding. I'm assuming when we say subcutaneous bleeding, that's like bruising. And um, then what's interesting about this one, Pu Hong, we say that we can use it in its charred form to enhance its ability to stop bleeding. So that's called Pu Hong Tan. Like we said before, a lot of these herbs can be charred to enhance their ability to stop bleeding. And then similar to before, we say that Pu Hong also invigorates blood to stop pain because where there's stagnation, there's pain. When we get rid of the stagnation, we get rid of the pain. And so you say this is for pain in the chest, abdomen, or postpartum pain due to blood stasis. And I forgot to put it here, so if it's not in your notes, be sure to add in menstrual pain as well, so painful menses. So I think I just said I was thinking that abdominal pain includes painful menses because that tends to be where the pain is. But I want to just specifically point this out because we do have several formulas where Pu Huang is there to treat painful menses. And then... Um, for this action of invigorating, it turns out we can also prepare Pu Huang with alcohol as well. So this is one that it has several different preparations, but if we want to emphasize Pu Huang's ability to stop bleeding, we would use it in its charred form. But if we wanted to emphasize Pu Huang's ability to invigorate blood and stop pain, we would use it in the alcohol prepared form. So that's just an example of how we can use these Pao Zhu methods to enhance or emphasize different functions of a nerve. And then with Pu Hong, we also say it promotes urination. And this is especially for painful dribbling urination that we call Lin syndrome. So Pu Hong is very good for promoting urination to treat Lin syndrome. And if we combine that with its ability to stop bleeding, we could say that Pu Hong is especially good for blood in the urine. And so this is another one that we say use caution during pregnancy because it has an invigorating function, but also Pu Huang used in its raw form can cause uterine contraction. So we especially want to use caution during pregnancy if we're using it in its raw form. This one, in terms of preparation, Bensky doesn't actually say this about putting it in a tea bag or wrapping it in gauze when you decoct it. Um, 
other books will say that. And whenever I've used this herb, I put it in a tea bag because it's like it's a loose a, it's a loose powder. It would make sense to to do that. So other books will say when you prepare Pu Huang in a decoction, put it in a, a cheesecloth bag. But technically, Bensky doesn't say that. So do what you want with that. Like I said, the name, this is cattail pollen, and so the name literally means cattail yellow. So maybe you can think about Pu Huang and cats, and cats like to scratch on things, and that causes bleeding. And you can maybe also remember that cats like to pee on things, and so that means Pu Huang promotes urination. Um, my cat doesn't do that, but I've heard other cats will try to mark their territory by peeing on your bed and stuff like that. So Pu Huang, that's what I would remember, is invigorates blood to stop bleeding, invigorates blood to stop pain, especially for abdominal pain or painful menses, and then also promotes urination because Pu Huang is yellow and pee is yellow or cats like to pee on things. So that's Pu Huang, cattail pollen. Next is Qian Cao Rubii Radix. Qian Cao Rubii Radix. So here we're getting into the herbs that clear heat and cool the blood to stop bleeding, for bleeding due to blood heat. But here you can see that Qian Cao actually does both. It clears heat and it invigorates blood. So some people will include this in the invigorate blood section and other books will include it here in the clear heat section. But Qian Cao is one of those that has some overlap. It does both. So Qian Cao clears heat to stop bleeding for any type of bleeding due to heat, like when you're talking about nosebleed, vomiting blood, blood in the urine, blood in the stool, etc. But then Qian Cao also invigorates blood. So it invigorates blood to stop bleeding and invigorates blood to stop pain. And this can be used for amenorrhea, so invigorating blood to treat amenorrhea, injury and trauma, or joint pain. So Qian Cao is kind of special here because it both clears heat and invigorates blood. So this is good when we have both, when heat in the blood causes blood stasis. When that heat gets into the blood, it dries out the blood and the movement becomes sluggish. Or some people will even say that the heat boils the blood. So kind of like what we said with phlegm, when heat cooks down the fluids and thickens them, then the fluids stop moving. The same thing here is happening to the blood. When heat gets into the blood, it cooks it down or it dries it out and, and we end up with blood stasis. So Qian Cao is good for both clearing heat and invigorating blood. So that's Qian Cao Rubii Radix. Does both clear heat and invigorate blood to stop bleeding. Next, we have a pair of herbs that are fairly similar. Daji and Xiaoji. Daji is big thistle and Xiaoji is small thistle. So these herbs have very similar functions, but if we wanted to differentiate them, we can maybe say that Daji big thistle has a specialty of treating bleeding in the upper body. So vomiting blood or coughing up blood, whereas Xiaoji small thistle is better for bleeding in the lower body, especially blood in the urine. So these two are very similar and those are maybe some specialties that we can point out. But let's go ahead and look at each one individually. So first is Da Ji, Circe Japaniki Herba Su Radix. Da Ji, like we said, this is big thistle or large thistle. And Da Ji clears heat and cools the blood to stop bleeding. And we could say it's especially good for bleeding in the upper body. So vomiting blood and coughing up blood. But even though we say that this is dodgy specialty, we can use dodgy for other types of bleeding. So we'll also see it used in formulas for things like blood in the urine, blood in the stool, or uterine bleeding. So we will see dodgy used for all types of bleeding, but we could maybe say that its specialty is upper body bleeding. Besides that, dodgy also clears heat toxicity to treat skin infections for carbuncles, sores, and swellings. And for this application, we usually use dodgy in its fresh form, like you would pound it and use it as a poultice, apply it externally. Dodgy also clears damp heat to treat jaundice, and it lowers high blood pressure, especially when we have other signs of liver heat. So that's dodgy. The name means big thistle. Whereas the other one is Xiaoji, Circe Herba. Xiaoji is small thistle. So we can see that its functions are fairly similar. It clears heat to stop bleeding, but then we can see that it also has an additional function of promoting urination to treat Lin syndrome. So again, when we put these two functions together, stopping bleeding due to heat and promoting urination, this makes Xiaoji especially useful for treating Shui Lin, Bloody Lin, or 
painful urination with blood in the urination. So I would say that that's Xiaoji's specialty. With these other, other functions, we technically say it has these functions, but it's much weaker than Daji. So those are the ways we could differentiate it. Daji upper body, Xiaoji lower body, Daji a little bit stronger, Xiaoji a little bit weaker. But it turns out we will see Xiaoji in one formula, and the name of that formula is Xiaoji Inza, small thistle drink, and that is a formula for blood in the urine. So if you remember anything about Xiaoji, I would remember blood in the urine. After that is D.E. Sanguisorbi Radix. D.E. Sanguisorbi Radix. So even the Latin name sounds kind of like blood. So DE clears heat and cools the blood to stop bleeding. And this is another one that's especially for bleeding in the lower body. But for DE, I would think specifically about large intestine bleeding and uterine bleeding. So DE is especially good for hemorrhoids, bloody dysentery, or excessive uterine bleeding. Remember, we talked about flooding and spotting. Flooding is like heavy menses. Spotting, we mean bleeding between periods. So DE, that's what I would think about. Hemorrhoids, bloody dysentery, and uterine bleeding. DE also clears heat toxicity. It can be used for sores and bed sores. This is usually people in hospitals that when they lay in one position for too long, the pressure causes a bed sore, so we can use DE. This can also be used for burns and scalds. For these applications, we'd use DE externally. And then DE is another one that if we want to emphasize its action of stopping bleeding, we, we would use it in its charred form. But for DE, I would definitely think about lower body bleeding, specifically large intestine bleeding, hemorrhoids and bloody dysentery, and uterine bleeding, flooding and spotting for DE. The next one is kind of similar in that it treats lower body bleeding. Why me, Sephora floss immaturus? Why me, Sephora floss immaturus? And this is the bud of the Chinese pagoda tree. So why me clears heat to stop bleeding. And again, this is another one for lower body bleeding, but it's especially for hemorrhoids and bloody dysentery. So for why me, I would definitely think about large intestine bleeding, as in hemorrhoids and bloody dysentery. Why me also clears liver heat, especially for red eyes, headache, and dizziness. But again, I would think large intestine bleeding. So for why me, I think about like you're sitting on the toilet, you have hemorrhoids and bloody dysentery, and you're like, why me? And that's why me Sephora floss immaturus. This sometimes also goes by the name why hua me. Hua means flower or just why hua. So we have a couple different names. But why means pagoda and me means rice. So I guess the, the little bud looks kind of like uh, like raw rice. So why me is pagoda rice. Think large intestine bleeding. Why me? Next is Sibaye platy cladi cucumin. Sibaye platy cladi cucumin. This is arbor vitae twig. So I think arbor vitae is a type of tree or bush that a lot of people use in landscaping, but this is specifically Chinese arbor vitae twig. So Sibaye clears heat and cools the blood to stop bleeding, but notice that this one also has an astringent property. So besides clearing heat, it can also induce astringency to stop bleeding. And so that's why we can say it can be used for bleeding due to either heat or cold. So by itself, Sibaye is good for bleeding due to heat, but because it has this astringent property, we can use it for bleeding due to cold, so long as we combine it with other warm herbs. So besides that, Sibaye also transforms phlegm and stops cough for thick, difficult to expect rate blood streaked phlegm due to heat in the lung. So this is one where if we put these two functions together, we can say that Sibaye clears heat to stop bleeding, but it's also for cough due to phlegm, put those together, and this is especially good for cough with blood streaked sputum because it's addressing both of those aspects of the cause. And Sibaye can also be used externally for burns and scalds, and here we say it's used topically in powdered form for early stage burns, and it also is good for hair loss. So that's Sibaye platycladic cumin. The name literally means lateral fur leaf. So that's Sibaye. I would think about uh, bleeding due to heat, but also having an astringent property. So that makes it a little bit more uh, versatile in its use. But then because it also transforms phlegm and stops cough, think about coughing up with bloody phlegm. So that's Sibaye, platycladic cumin. Next is 
Bai Mao Gun Impurity Rhizoma. Bai Mao Gun Impurity Rhizoma. So Bai Mao Gun clears heat and cools the blood to stop bleeding. And here we could say its specialties are for bloody sputum or coughing up blood streak sputum and for blood in the urine or bloody Lin syndrome. And so this makes sense if we look at its other properties, we say that bimalgan promotes urination, especially for heat pattern Lin syndrome or uh, Shui Lin, blood in the urine. So this makes sense that if bimalgan stops bleeding and promotes urination, that makes it really good for blood in the urine. But then bimalgan also clears lung and stomach heat for nausea and thirst or for wheezing. So again, if we, know that bimal gun is good for clearing lung heat and it also stops bleeding. We know that it's good for cough with blood streaked sputum, like we said before. But then notice that this one, we also say it's especially good for thirst and notice that bimal gun is sweet in flavor and the sweet flavor tonifies and generates, uh, tonifies and moistens. So there are some books that will say that when it clears lung and stomach heat, bimal gun is specifically good for generating body fluids to alleviate thirst. So that's another action of bimal gun because of its sweet flavor. And this is often combined with lugun for this purpose. If you remember, lugun is phragmitis rhizoma. We learned it in the drain fire category that it also is good for generating body fluids and clearing lung and stomach heat. So that's a very similar function to bimal gun. The name just means white reed root. But for this one, I would remember the bleeding, the coughing up bloody sputum because it clears lung heat and the blood in the urine because it also promotes urination. So those are the two things I would remember about bimalgan and puritai rhizoma. Next, we get into our section of herbs that induce astringency to stop bleeding. So these herbs have an astringent property that restrains the blood or holds it in and that's how it performs its action of stopping bleeding. So our first one here is Xian He Cao Agrimonia Herba. Xian He Cao Agrimonia Herba. So this one you can see that it's both bitter and astringent. And because of that, we can say that Xian He Cao induces astringency to stop bleeding. And so because it stops bleeding by holding the blood in, it can basically be used for any type of bleeding. So we can say it can be used for bleeding due to heat, bleeding due to cold, bleeding due to excess, bleeding due to deficiency. It's basically an all-purpose blood stopper depending on what other herbs we combine it. So Xian He Cao induces astringency for all types of bleeding, but then Xian He Cao also stops diarrhea and dysentery, especially for chronic diarrhea and chronic dysentery. So Xian He Cao not only induces astringency to stop bleeding, it also induces astringency to stop diarrhea. So both of those functions are related to its astringent nature. Besides that, Xian He Cao also kills parasites. Remember in TCM, we could say parasites are things like real parasites, intestinal parasites, or they're things like skin infection or fungal infection. So when you say Xian He Cao kills parasites, it's for tapeworm, intestinal parasites, or it's good for basically itchy genitals, trichomonas vaginitis or uh, fungal itchy genitals, let's just say. And for that, we use it topically. So Xian He Cao, the name means immortal crane herb. Not really sure what that means, but for Xian He Cao, I would remember it has an astringent nature, which makes it an all-purpose blood stopper, but it also induces astringency to stop diarrhea. So that's Xian He Cao. And then next is Bai Ji Blatillae Rhizoma. Bai Ji Blatilla Rhizoma. This one also induces astringency to stop bleeding, but here we could say the specialty of Bai Ji is for lung and stomach bleeding. So vomiting blood, coughing blood, and nosebleed. These are all examples of lung and stomach bleeding. And then also kind of interesting, we say that Bai Ji is good for stomach ulcer, that it heals damaged stomach lining. So you can think that stomach ulcer is also kind of like stomach bleeding. So Bai Ji, lung and stomach bleeding. Then we say it can also be used topically for bleeding due to injury and trauma. And then kind of an interesting thing here is that Bai Ji reduces swelling and regenerates flesh. So it's good for sores, abscesses, and chapped skin, and it also closes cracks and fissures. So we say it's for anal fissures or 
cracks on the hands and feet. And so for these applications, you would apply it topically. You could like make Baiji into a lotion that you could apply on your skins. So for this one, I remember a story that my Chinese teacher told me. He said that when he was in grade school, they went on a field trip to rural China to where the farmers were planting rice. And if you've ever seen how rice is planted, they basically flood the field and then plant the little uh, right, the little sprouts. And so basically the farmer's hands are constantly in cold water. So it was very common for them to have dry chapped hands or cracked hands. And so they would always have Bai Ji available to apply as a lotion for their chapped and cracked hands. I think maybe a, a modern application for this would be like if you're rock climbing and all the chalk dries out your hands and it gets cracked, you could make a lotion of Bai Ji to uh, reduce swelling, regenerate flesh and close those cracks and fissures. So for this one, to use it externally, you would crush it into a powder and mix it with either honey, egg white, or sesame oil. And that's how you could use it for these external applications. And then we also note that Bai Ji is incompatible with Futsa or incompatible with Wu To. So if you remember back at the very beginning when we talked about our methods of combinations, one of the things we talked about were the 18 incompatible herbs. And even though we say 18 incompatible herbs, we really mean there are three categories of incompatibilities. And the idea here is if we combined any of these herbs, then that might create some side effects that don't exist in either herb alone. So we have herbs that are incompatible with gansao, herbs that are incompatible with futsa or wu to. Wu to is just the whole aconite plant or li lu. I don't think anybody ever actually uses li lu. So here when we look at our incompatibilities with futsa, we see that bai ji is there, that it's one of the incompatible herbs with futsa. I'm not sure that you would ever think to use this combination in real life, but technically this is one of the 18 incompatibilities, so you should probably know it, especially if you're taking boards that they like to ask questions about the 18 incompatible herbs. So that's Bai Ji, Blatilla rhizoma, another one that's good for inducing astringency to stop bleeding, especially for lung and stomach bleeding. And I also remember chap skin or cracks and fissures. So the last one in our section of astringent herbs is Ojie. This is lotus root node. So when I was in school, this was not on the syllabus, but you will see this pop up in certain formulas and formula modifications. And this is on the NCCOM herb list, so it's probably a good one to know. But Ojie induces astringency and invigorates blood to stop bleeding. So this can be used for pretty much any type of bleeding. The only thing is OGA is not very strong in its actions. It's very mild. So you'll never see OGA being used as the chief herb in a formula. It'll always be an auxiliary herb or a modification just to amp up the formula's action of stopping bleeding. But because OGA is neutral in temperature and because it induces astringency, that makes it very versatile. It can be used for pretty much any type of bleeding. And because it also invigorates blood, that means we can use OGA without worrying about inadvertently causing some blood stasis along the way. So OGA, I would just remember a very good all-purpose blood stopper, just not very strong in its actions. And this is going to sound kind of bad, so I'm just going to preface this by saying I did not come up with this. This is something one of my teachers said, and I just remember it all of these years later. But he was like, you can maybe remember that OJ sounds like OJ, as in OJ Simpson. And maybe that can help you remember that this herb has something to do with bleeding. So if you didn't know, O.J. Simpson had a small role in the movie The Naked Gun with Leslie Nielsen, where he played a police officer. And there's an a, a opening where he gets shot several times. And then there's a comedic sequence where he steps in a bear trap and falls over a boat. So there's a lot of bleeding and injury and trauma. So when he said O.J. sounds like O.J., I'm assuming that this is what he was referring to. So... Maybe that's a way you can remember OJ is kind of an all-purpose blood stopper, but also just remember it's not very strong in its actions. And our last section in this category is herbs that warm the interior or herbs that warm the channels to stop bleeding. So this is bleeding due to deficiency cold. And the first one we learn here is I ye. Artemisia argyifolium, I-ye, Artemisia argyifolium, and this is mugwort, or what you also call moxa, as in needlehead moxa or stick moxa. 
So IA warms the channels to stop bleeding, or we could more specifically say it warms the menses to stop bleeding. I think Bensky even says warms the womb to stop bleeding because this is mainly for menstrual bleeding or bleeding in the lower jaw. So we say for cold pattern bleeding, such as menstrual bleeding, stomach bleeding with blood in the diarrhea, etc. This is bleeding due to deficiency cold. IA also calms restless fetus, specifically for bleeding during pregnancy. So again, here we could say bleeding during pregnancy is like a severe form of restless fetus, and our worry there is that this may be a sign of miscarriage, so we want to treat that right away. Besides warming the channels and stopping bleeding, IA also disperses cold and stops pain. So this kind of makes sense because cold causes stagnation, stagnation causes pain, so by dispersing the cold will also stop the pain. So for cold abdominal pain, irregular menses or painful menses, and this can be used internally as in a decoction that you drink, or can be used externally as in your burning moxa over, over the area. IA can also be used to treat skin problems like eczema or fungal infections, and so this is for dampness and itching, and you would apply this externally as a wash. So that's IA. You can remember this is moxa. Moxa is something that you burn, so hopefully that can help you remember that it's good for bleeding due to cold or bleeding to do due to deficiency cold. And for IA, I would remember the main applications are for menstrual bleeding and menstrual pain. So that's why I say it warms the menses or warms the womb to stop bleeding. So IA, think lower jowl. And finally, we have one that may or may not be on your syllabus, but I just went ahead and put it here, and that is Pao Jiang Zingiberis Rhizoma Preparatum. Pao Jiang Zingiberis rhizoma preparatum. This is blast fried ginger. So basically what they do is they take a wok and heat it up really hot and then just throw in some ginger root and toss it around until it starts to blister or get a little bit blackened on the outside. So this is basically charred ginger root. So Pao Jiang warms the channels to stop bleeding. And hopefully this makes sense because remember, ginger is warm in temperature. It goes to the middle jowl. This is basically charred ginger, so that gives it the ability to stop bleeding. And this is for bleeding due to spleen yang deficiency or middle jowl bleeding like vomiting blood, blood in the stool, or flooding and spotting. So maybe for Ai Ye, you can remember more that that one goes to the lower jowl, whereas Pao Jiang is ginger, so it's good for the middle jowl. And Pao Jiang also warms the middle jowl because it's ginger, so it's good for abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea due to cold. So like I said, this may or may not be on your syllabus, uh, but this is on the NCCM herb list. And at least with Bensky, he actually talks about this herb as a variation of, of uh, dried ginger in the warm the interior category. But other books will actually put it, uh, will list it as a separate herb and put it in this category because it's basically charred ginger and so we use it for its action of stopping bleeding. So we could say that Pao Jiang is another one that warms the interior and warms the channels to stop bleeding for bleeding due to deficiency cold. So that's Pao Jiang blast fried ginger. Then after that, there's a few that are not on the syllabus, but I just thought they were fun and I kind of wanted to mention them. So one is Xue Yi Tam, and this is charred human hair. So this one induces astringency to stop bleeding, but um, this I just thought it was kind of a fun one to bring up. This is another one of our astringent herbs, and it's charred human hair. And I've kind of heard some interesting stories about this because apparently the way you do this is you take a bunch of hair and put it in a cast iron pot and put the top on and seal it and then put it over a fire and you can't open the lid. Like if you open the lid and look to see if it's done, that will actually ruin it. So you have to keep the lid on the whole time. So what they would do is they would put it over the fire and put a little rice kernel on top. And when that rice kernel popped, that means that your charred human hair was done. And so you could take it off the heat and open the top or let it cool down. So that's just kind of an interesting one, charred human hair. I think when I was in school, we did have this in clinic and it basically looked like a piece of charcoal and it smelled burnt. So it didn't actually resemble hair at all. It just looked like a lump of charred stuff.
This is also kind of funny because you know that like we have different herbs that depending on their region, they might have different properties. So like Chuan Bay Mu versus Jiu Bay Mu or uh, Northern Chai Hu versus Southern Chai Hu. I tried to ask one of my Chinese teachers, like, does it does it matter where the hair comes from? It was like Sichuan hair is more is more acrid, where as uh, other types. And he's like, no, it's just it's just human hair. So. That I think that's kind of an interesting one. And then another one is Zhao Xin Tu, and this is oven clay. So this is like the if you have a traditional oven, earth-fired oven or wood-fired oven, this would be clay that you chip out from the inside. And uh, it's also called Huang Tu. Huang means yellow, Tu means earth. And so this is another one that warms the middle jowl and stops bleeding. And so I think this is kind of interesting because this is like a literal doctrine of signatures. Sometimes you see this like when they talk about preparing herbs with wine, they'll say uh, soak the herbs in wine and then dig a hole and bury it in the earth. And by having it buried in the earth, that makes it good for the spleen and stomach that you're imbuing the herbs with the earth by earth energy by putting it in the earth. And this is one that you're you're literally using earth in order to help the spleen and stomach. So I just think that's kind of interesting. It turns out there is one formula where this comes up called Huang Tu Tong, yeah, yellow earth decoction, which is for this type of um, bleeding due to deficiency cold like vomiting blood. So that's just another one, interesting one I thought I'd bring up. But those are the herbs that stop bleeding. So at this point, I always like to introduce a couple of formulas. This is not meant to be a formula course, but this just kind of gives some of the herbs some extra context uh, when you can see how these herbs are being used. So here's a couple formulas that uh, where these herbs pop up. So the first one is Shi Hui San, 10 chard powder. Shi Hui San, 10 chard powder. And so this is for bleeding due to heat in the middle and upper jowl. So we can have nosebleed, vomiting blood, spitting blood, coughing up blood, usually acute with a sudden onset. The tongue is red because this is bleeding due to heat. The pulse is rapid because this is bleeding due to heat. And so uh, when you look at this formula, remember we, we said as part of our Pao Juru that certain herbs can be charred in order to enhance their ability to stop bleeding. Basically in this formula, we just, we took a bunch of herbs and charred them all. And then we created this formula, Shi Hui San. So we have ones that we've seen like Da Ji and Xiao Ji, Big Thistle and Small Thistle, Si Ba Ye, Bai Mao Gen, Qian Cao, we all saw here. <clears throat> and then we have some other herbs that are not in this category, but these are herbs that can be used in their charred form to stop bleeding. So He Ye was Lotus Leaf, Jirtzo we learned in the Drain Fire category, Da Huang is Rhubarb, that can be used in its charred form to stop bleeding. So this is just kind of an interesting formula that we just took a whole bunch of herbs that stopped bleeding, charred them, and put them together in one formula, and that's Shi Hui San, 10 Charred Substances Powder. Another one I kind of mentioned earlier was Xiaoji Inza, small thistle drink. Xiaoji Inza has Xiaoji or small thistle in the name. And so this is for Shui Lin or bloody Lin. So painful urinary dribbling with blood in the urine, frequent urgent burning pain, or just blood in the urine accompanied by thirst and irritability. So again, the tongue is red with a thin yellow coat because we're, this is due to heat. The pulse is rapid and forceful, rapid because of the heat. Forceful means we're talking about excess heat. And so this is, I think this is the one formula where Xiao Ji, small thistle, is an ingredient and it's the, the, the formula is named after it. So that's why I say if you remember one thing about Xiao Ji, I would remember blood in the urine. But then again, we have Wu Jie, just because it, it can be used as an auxiliary herb for bleeding. Pu Huang is another one here that's good for stopping bleeding. Pu Huang, remember, we also said that it promotes urination. So that's another one that makes it good for treating this bloody lin, because Pu Huang is cattail pollen. Cats like to scratch and cause bleeding, and cats also like to pee on things. And then you can see over there, we have some other herbs that are from the drain dampness category. So. Hua Shi, Mu Tong, Don Ju Ye were all from the Lin Syndrome category that promote urination to treat Lin Syndrome. Jirtso was from the Drain Fire category. So another one that guides heat out through the urine. But anyway, the point here is this is the one formula where we see Xiao Ji and it's for blood in the urine. So that's what I would remember about Xiao Ji, small thistle. Another one with the where the herb is in the name of the formula, Huai Hua San, Sephora Japaniki Flower Powder. So Huai Hua San is for 
wind heat or damp heat in the stomach and intestines, and that's gonna be causing bleeding. So bright red bleeding from the rectum during defecation, blood in the stools, and hemorrhoids with either bright red or dark red bleeding. This is like you're sitting on the toilet and you're like, why me? And um, so that's why I would use hua hua sound. The tongue is again red because we're dealing with heat. The pulse is either rapid and wiry or rapid and soggy. So if it's wind heat that got into the intestines and seared it, we'll see a rapid wiry pulse. But if it's more damp heat in the intestines, we'll see a rapid and soggy pulse. But here you can see, of course, we use huai mi. Here we call it huai hua mi or huai hua is huai mi. And so it's good for um, in large intestine bleeding. So either bloody dysentery or hemorrhoids. Si ba ye is also there. Jing jie is, in is interesting. You remember we said jing jie is uh, good for wind. So that's why it's here for wind heat. But jing jie was also another one that we can use in its charred form to stop bleeding. So that's another action here. And then even though we, we it's mainly why me for this, this type of bleeding, there are variations and modifications of this formula where we also include DE. So DE sanguisorbii is another one that I would think about for large intestine bleeding or bleeding in the lower jaw, bleeding um, bloody dysentery or hemorrhoids. So that's another one that we might add in here as well for this condition. And then another interesting one we have here, uh, Yunnan Baiyao, white medicine from Yunnan. This is a patent medicine. This is a very, uh, very commonly used patent medicine that's good for stopping bleeding due to injury and trauma. So there's a whole story about here how this is a, a this was a secret family formula that um, somebody created, and then it became very famous because they it was used during a certain battle and. Um, uh, the soldiers would use it to stop bleeding, and so it eventually got donated to the Chinese government. And so it's, according to the story, it's still a secret formula. So technically, we don't know what's in it. If you go and look on Wikipedia, they have a list of herbs that, at least that's what they tell the, the U.S. government when you, when you import it, you have to say what's inside of it. So that's what the, that's at least what they list as the ingredients. But other people say it's still a top secret formula. Um, but whether or not it's top secret, most people would guess that the chief herb in this is San Chi because San Chi has a very reliable action of stopping bleeding. It's very commonly used for injury and trauma. So it's very it's very likely that San Chi is the chief herb here. So this would be an example of using San Chi as something for uh, bleeding due to injury and trauma. And actually, um, at least from what I've seen, this is actually very popular in veterinary medicine too. That uh, Both when I was in California and when I was in Kentucky, we had people coming in and saying, hey, my, my veterinarian, my, my dog has this bleeding condition and my veterinarian told me to come in and get some Yunnan buyout that they could give to their dog. So this one you can either, if you have a wound, you can sprinkle it on top or some people do take it internally. Um, lately I've I've had trouble finding sources of, of where to get this. I'm not sure if it's if it's difficult to import nowadays, but um, this might be difficult to get. But this is a very commonly used patent medicine for bleeding. Um, maybe another one we can talk about is a, a specific type of jungu shui. So this is another one that is very commonly used for injury and trauma. Um, but it's just that if you get nowadays, if you get the stuff in the red bottle, they've actually removed the San Chi, presumably to cut cost. Um, so I feel like it's not quite as effective anymore. So there is a, a guy in Florida started making his own version called Evil Bone Water. And this one does have the San Chi in it. So this one, like I've actually, even though it's like injury and trauma, like um, bruises, sprains, even broken bones, things like that. Um, I've actually recently been using a lot for bleeding because I've been cutting myself a lot lately. And so it turns out it has such a large dosage of Sanchi in it that you can apply it and it will help stop the bleeding. So that's that's another one. If you're having trouble finding Yunnan Bio, that's another thing you can go and, and look for. Evil Bone Water by Mark Brinson. I had him on the podcast once. So you can, you can listen to that episode at podcast.tcmstudy.net. 
So then if we want to do a quick review, um, this is a long category and some of the herbs look kind of similar, but I would first think about um, by which way, like go through each herb and think about by which way does it stop bleeding? Is it, does it invigorate blood to stop bleeding? Does it clear heat and cool the blood to stop bleeding? Does it induce astringency or does it warm the interior, warm the channels to stop bleeding? So I'd first of all, make sure that you know that. And then um, also go through and look that in terms of stopping bleeding, does it have a specialty? And so, um, sorry, I'm, I'm not sure I want to go through it. Like, I'm not feeling well. I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm not sure I want to go through each of these. But remember, San Chi and Pu Huang invigorate blood to stop bleeding, especially for injury and trauma. Pu Huang also promotes urination, so it was good for that. Uh, Qian Sao is the one that both invigorates blood and clears heat and cools the blood. So if heat gets into the blood and starts drying it out, it clears the heat, but also invigorates. Daji and Xiaoji. Daji, especially good for bleeding in the upper body, vomiting blood, coughing up blood. Xiaoji, specifically blood in the urine. Then remember, they also had other functions about clearing heat toxicity and things like that. DE and Huai Mi, I would think about large intestine bleeding, so blood in the stool, hemorrhoids. Um, si bai ye, bai ma, remember we, we talked about um, the lung and stomach bleeding and uh, generating body fluids to alleviate thirst or especially with coughing up bloody sputum. Uh, then we got into the ones that induce astringency. Bai Ji, I like to think about the cracks on the hands. O Jie, it's good for bleeding, but it's not very strong. It's kind of like it's it's good for all types of bleeding, but it's just not very strong. So it's always going to be used as secondary herb. IEA is the one that warms the interior to stop bleeding, especially for um, menstrual bleeding or painful menses, so bleeding due to cold. So that is our category, um, herbs that stop bleeding. Sorry, I haven't been feeling well the last couple days, so this this might be a rough video to edit, um, but thank you for sticking with me. This was a more detailed look at uh, the category herbs that stop bleeding. If you're studying for finals, year ends, or boards, and you want just more of a quick review, I do have uh, paid courses on Teachable. There's a single herb review course that goes through all of the single herbs, and it just does a quick, uh, kind of brief mention the main function of each one. And then there's also a formula review course that goes over all of the formulas on the NCCM list. So if you're reviewing for finals uh, or year ends or boards, check those out. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who supports the website and the YouTube channel. Um, if you're getting value out of these videos and you want to give something back, you can uh, join the Patreon. That's like a monthly pledge, or you can do a one-time donation through Buy Me a Coffee. But I'm getting scratchy and starting to lose my voice, so thanks for being here. Uh, we'll come back next time with the final category is herbs that invigorate the blood. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.